Now I am so excited about this book because um, before I decided to make this a journey for us, I hopped all the way to page um, chapter 37. And what it said to me there was um, sharing your life message sharing your life message and i started reading little hints and hints and everything that i've been thinking about was just popping out in these pages and i said oh my goodness i need to share this you're going to be surprised that all the things you've been going through that you are thinking were negatives have all been designed they have all been designed by god and that's why we're taking it right from the beginning i just read this part where i'm telling you that it says, long before you were created, I mean, long before you were conceived, He conceived you. You are here on a bigger mission, a mission to further God's work on this earth. And if, if you've been listening to some of my talks on YouTube, most of these things, I've talked about them in the past. Because it starts with your mind. That's where the issue is. That's where the problem is, is the mind. And um, uh, when I listen to Bob Proctor, a few other people, they say the mind is the CPU, you know, the computer, part of the computer where everything is done. I call it the mind is the kitchen of the body. That's where we cook. That's where the food is cooked. That's where you have the recipes. Because everything that comes to your mind becomes who you eventually portray to the world. So if in your mind you have sadness and negative thoughts and anger and unhappiness, and that's what comes out. And that's what you hear when people say law of attraction. And if you did listen or you bought the book or about the secret, there was a time they had this book, The Secret, and everyone went crazy about it. All the secret was talking about was the same law of attraction. And so law of attraction is anything you portray you drag it into your life and everything you are going through one way or the other without you knowing it you have attracted it so this is why working with the mind is the most important thing anybody can do it starts from the mind the kind of thoughts you put in there because if you clean that mind amazing positive things starts to happen and I am African and Nigerian and I know how we think back home. Everything that goes wrong is somebody that did it. You know, that family, they never want to see me look good. They, want, they don't want to see me be happy. And so that's why they've gone to do something. No, you'll be surprised it started with you. You'll be surprised it's the way you looked at that person that the person looked back at you. And you know, I have four children and I have to manage four emotions. And, Sometimes you hear this one say, but the other one did this and, and I said, but what did you do to get that reaction from that person? So it's all about action and reaction. So that's what we mean by you are not your bank account. Because your bank account is a piece of paper. It's your mind that's going to create what would change that piece of paper. It's your mind that's going to create those amazing skills and knowledge and experiences and information, things that you are going to share with the world that will change the way your world will happen. I mean, um, for me, I am this, I mean, there's another passage in the Bible that says, uh, let me see if I can find it right now. And it's from King Solomon himself, I think it's Ecclesiastes. And what he was trying to tell us as humans is, most of us think we should just live in this world and do the one thing and that's it but he says no if i can't find it today i'll probably find it another time no vanity upon vanity and he was trying to explain to us that what we need to do is to take on as many skills as possible take on as many skills as possible he actually said take on seven or eight various things at every point in time and i was so amazed when i was watching bob proctor as well and he says they call it multiple streams of income i was like okay my goodness it's in the bible as well 
take on as many skills as possible because you never know the ways of the Lord. That's how I put it. And so some of us want to just wake up from maybe the age of 25 or 20, whenever we start this job, and that's our job for life. And then we complain. Oh, thank you so much. I hear we got quite a lot of viewers from Turkey and Chicago. Welcome on board, amazing people. We're so proud to have you. I mean, we're so happy. We feel really honored that people are taking their time to listen to this. And we're on this journey to transform our life. We're on this journey to change our way of looking at things. So one, some, someone asked earlier, how does your bank account not become who you are? And I was just trying to explain that. It comes down to the number of things you take on on this earth. And we're going to understand what God created us for. Because from the minute you start clearing your mind, opening yourself up to your creator, who created you for a reason, for reasons you and I still don't know. That's what we're taking on this journey. We're asking him to guide us. We're asking him to show us what he actually created us for. Because yes, we're not our bank account. And yes, we're not the exam result. And yes, we're bigger than that. So we want to know what we really are. That's what this journey is about. 40 days, we will wake up to that reality that there's so much for us to do on this earth to further God's work. About all the different things. Now I'm going to quickly pick out some, you know, um, lines that are underlined. Uh, that I haven't read because God made it for a reason he also decided when you will be born and how long you would live this is an interesting one because huh, I'll tell you something that I I really value on this statement um, I get lots of people you know if you do Instagram you get lots of messages people sending you messages every day and one of the biggest things we do as humans is we are so worried about death. We are so worried about death. Going to Ecclesiastes, it says there's time for everything. There is time for everything on this earth. A time to be born and a time to die. I can relate to you because I've lost so many relatives. And so you see some people, they are so scared of death. But one of the big things I want to say to you is if we're not doing so much here on this end, why are we so scared of dying? What is it that's holding us here that, you know what, because I was doing this amazing thing, please God, please don't take me yet. You have to be actively doing something that makes sense. Because reality is you don't even know where you're going. We don't know where we're going. We don't know if where we're going is going to be greater than here. We don't know that. So why are you holding on to something that you know ideally has no value? If that be the case. So what you need to do is speak to your father and say, please tell me what to do here now that I'm here. Because the thing is, just like he said, he planned the days of your life in advance, choosing the exact time of your birth and death. So I say to everyone that wants to listen, even if you wake up every day, do nothing, every day, do nothing, for the period he has given to you, it will come and go. So if I were you, I'll wake up, do something. This is for people who just don't want to do anything in their life. If I were you, I'll wake up, do something. There is no point sitting down there and being so worried about that. I'm thinking everyone is after your life. They didn't create you. God created you and he has given you a time to be here. I mean, Jesus Christ, our savior, he was here for only about 30 years, 33 years, and he did amazing things. So why can't we think in that line? What am I doing here? And that's why the title of this book really impresses me. What on earth am I here for? Why am I here? Am I here just to look at a bank account? Because like I said earlier, that bank account, you might fill it up in one day and it disappears in another day. And lots of people who make money in that kind of way, they're spiritually lost. They're dead spiritually. So what we need to focus on is what 
can we do while we are here? Whose lives are we touching? Who are we supporting? Who are we contributing to? What are we bringing to life? That's where your mind goes. That's where your mind should be going. Not about just filling a bank account. Thank you so much, Brother Bella. We're so happy that you're watching. And like we've been saying, we're hoping these 40 days we will change our life. So this is day two, and I'm just reading little bits here. So I'm just explaining this thing about life and death and how we shouldn't focus on how our life is the most amazing thing. We didn't create this life. So we don't know where we came from and we don't know where we're going. There's someone. We have a creator that created us. And so we need to look up to that creator and say, please guide me. Tell me what I should be doing with the life that you gave me. And not be so worried about how you're going to lose what you never owned. God also planned where you'll be born and where you live for his purpose. It's all about God's purpose. That's why we are here. Um, nothing in your life is arbitrary. It's all for a purpose. Purpose again. Purpose driven life. God never does anything accidentally and he never makes mistakes. We should know that for sure. We are not here by mistake. We are here for very clear reason. God was thinking of you even before he made the world. In fact, that's why he created it. God designed this planet and a planet's environment just so we could live in it. And I'm going to end this particular chapter today with this amazing poem. And this poem was by a man called Russell Kelfer. It says, you are who you are for a reason. You're part of an intricate plan. You are a precious and perfect, unique design called God's special woman or man. That's who you are. You say you look like you, you look like you look for a reason. You look like you look for a reason. Our God made no mistake. He knit you together within the womb. And this is very interesting because um, I'm studying nutrition right now and um and before i started the course the first things we were looking at was the, the 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 digestive system so for you to understand that from the minute you put that food in your mouth how does it go how does it get digested how does it get absorbed and all of that before the body finally uses it and then what's not in use is sent out and i tell you looking at the stomach alone looking at the small intestine, looking at the large intestine, and then going micro into each of these areas, I tell you, I could not stop praising God. Because when you don't hear all the different difficulties and complications that people have, and then you go, oh my goodness, there is not one tiny little dot of you that he has not put perfectly in place. And then what happens is we then carry ourselves. I have nothing against doctors, which is why I chose to study nutrition for myself and my family. And of course, the, the clients that I will be supporting out there when I'm done. They use us most of the time for, for they just want to experiment. Someone said to me the other day, they said, oh my God, I was in the hospital and uh, then she woke up. And what happened? She said she saw some doctors walking and they were just looking at the patients that were sleeping and then they were just pointing at that one, that one, that one. She said I was wide awake because I didn't want them to drag me into the theater and use me for experiment. They don't care because for them they have to have someone to try something on. Do you want to be that person that they try something on? And then you hear how, oh no, we've lost that one. Because they did not create you. Just looking at the digestive system alone gave me a clear message of the amazing work that God has done with us. 
And so he knit you slowly in your mother's womb. And then you look at us, you look at yourself, and most times as humans, we destroy it because we have no appreciation of this amazing being that we are. And we think that who we are is this ego that we've created, this person that has a bank full of, a bank account full of money or has a bank account that has no money or spoke to this person and this person looked at her funny and so you go home and cry. I mean, I, I do all the social media I can do and I get this, ones who just want to come there and make the most ridiculous negative comments just to get to you and trust me they don't get to me because i know who i am god created me put me here on this earth for a purpose and that's what i want you to take from this 40 days remind yourself constantly you're here for a purpose he needs you together he put you wherever you are he has a reason why he put you there and so God made no mistake. God knit you together within the womb. You're just what he made, he wanted to make. You are complete. You're what he wanted to make. As you had were the ones he chose. And no matter how you may feel, they were custom designed with God's plans in mind. And they bear the master's seal. You are the master's seal. The master is your creator. No that trauma you faced was not easy and God wept that it hurt you so but it was allowed to shape your heart so that into his likeness you grow so when things go wrong when things are happening the way you human me and you human are looking at it and we're thinking oh my goodness why is God just watching this happening and not stopping it it's meant to shape you whatever it is it's happened for a reason and I can testify to that because I've been through so much recently. But I've learned that whatever I've been going through, we're meant to shape me. We're meant to strengthen me. We're meant to make me this person that I've turned out to be. And I want the same for you too. You say you are who you are for a reason. You've been formed by the master's rod. You are who you are, beloved, because there is a God. And that's the point, because there is a God. I mean, I look at myself and I, I wonder. I come from a little village way back in Nigeria. And how did, I, how did I find myself here? I look back and I don't know how. And today I'm here chatting with you. I don't know how. So there's a reason that I was created. And there's a mission, a big mission he created me for. You know, from the chapter we read, he was saying he knew where he wanted you to live for a reason. He knew where he wanted to, you to be born for a reason. So all of us are here for a reason. And that's the reason I want us to find out in this 40 days journey we're going on. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for being there. I am super excited because this journey is really, really turning out the way I was dreaming it. So I'm hoping it's turning out that way for you too. So we'll see you tomorrow, same time, and God bless you.